A few people have been asking for a tutorial on how to make Minecraft bots. So here you go. This is the bot we'll be making today. It looks at the nearest entity, whether that's a player, mob, or item. If you punch it, it'll start running forwards towards whatever it's looking at. Punching it again makes it stop. It's a really simple bot, and there's a link to the complete source code in the description. You should definitely take your time to read through it when you're finished with this video. As for prerequisites, you're going to need Node.js installed, at least a basic understanding of JavaScript, Mindflayer, which can be installed with the Node Package Manager, and a Minecraft server. Mindflayer bots can use actual Minecraft accounts to join the server, but because we won't be doing that in this tutorial, you'll need to set online mode to false in the server settings. You'll also need a JavaScript file to put your code in, which can be called whatever you want, just make sure it has a .js file extension. First, we have to import Mindflayer. Before we create the bot, we need to define some settings. These include the username for the bot, which I'm setting to test machine, and the address of the server you want it to join. If you're running the server on your own computer, set this to localhost. We can create a bot with these settings using Mindflayer's create bot function. By running this code, it makes a bot, but it doesn't do anything yet, so let's add some logic to control it. To do this, there are two things you need to understand. Methods and event listeners. Methods are how you make your bot do stuff, like walking, jumping, mining, and crafting. Event listeners allow you to execute a function when specific events take place, like when it starts to rain, when a block is placed, or when a player joins the server. For example, here I have a function that makes the bot say hello. It uses the chat method to make the bot send a message. We can use event listeners to make the bot execute this function when it joins the server. There are two ways to add event listeners. You can use bot.on and bot.once. Starting with bot.on, which takes the name of an event and a function to execute. In this case, we can use the event called spawn and the greeting function that I wrote earlier. This almost works, but there's still a problem. The spawn event executes when the bot spawns in the world which means it also executes when the bot respawns after it dies. Which brings us to the other way of adding event listeners, bot.once. This works exactly like bot.on, but the function is only executed the first time the event happens, which in this case is when the bot joins the server. Now it works properly, but we can simplify things further by using lambda functions. If you don't know what a lambda function is, look it up. It's basically like a normal function, but you write it like this. This way, we don't have to come up with a name for our functions, which should save you a lot of time when writing code. By using lambda functions, we can simplify this into this. Remember, this is still doing the same thing, we're just writing it differently. The next thing we want to do is make the bot continuously look at the nearest entity. To do this, we can use the move event, which is an event that is pretty much continuously triggered, and the look at method, which we need to provide with a position. With this code, we can look up the nearest entity and if there is a nearest entity, make the bot look at it. However, in Minecraft, your position is actually based on where your feet are. So if we want our bot to look the entity in the eye, we should offset the position of where the bot is looking by the height of the entity, which means the code for this event ends up looking like this. From here, making the bot walk when it's hit is fairly simple. Mindflayer doesn't have an event for when the bot gets hurt, but it does have a more general event for when any entity gets hurt but that will pass the entity that got hurt to our function as an argument, which means we can check if that entity is our bot, or more specifically, if it's our bot's entity. If that's not the case, we can stop executing the function. However, if it is our bot, we can make it walk forward using the setControlState method. This method can be used to control the bot's movement. It takes the name of a control, such as forward, and a state to set it to, either true or false. When it's set to true, the control is active. When it's set to false, the control is inactive. For example, this is telling the bot to put its virtual finger on the jump key. This is telling the bot to take its virtual finger off the jump key. So now we have this code, and our bot walks forward when we hit it. All that's left to do is make it stop when we hit it a second time. We can use the same set control state as before, but we'll also introduce a variable that keeps track of whether or not the bot is currently walking and use that in the setControlState method. And there you have it, a Minecraft bot written in Node using Mindflayer. 
If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments, and if I see enough interest, I'll probably make more. Consider giving this video a like, and subscribe if you haven't already.